What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope you all had a great weekend. Bobby Fadden, the man, Eric Sheets Haber. I am on the road right now, and unfortunately, in a little, little bit of a bizarre rain and wind and storm in, in LA, which I was not ready for. So things have kind of been hit or miss a little bit with the internet. So hopefully, everything holds up. Sheets, how was your weekend? You had a nice, another, uh, another nice couple of, of solid victories yeah. there. Yeah, and uh, talk a little about that, and we'll get into tonight's slate. Yeah, did nicely in the uh, the in the, in the DFS streets over the weekend. Um, I uh, I hit the uh, I chopped the optimal in the MMA with some people, but it made you know good money there. And then uh, had a couple of decent uh, basketball slates and and then uh, LOL slate, which wasn't bad. Um, had another hockey sweat. Yeah, had a pretty pretty nice like ten ten twelve thousand dollar weekend, which is really really good. You know? Yeah. Um, so that was awesome. And I actually, uh, hit some stable dual DFS, uh, site. I hit something over there, which I never play. I figured I'd screenshot that in there. Um, maybe one day we'll talk about, uh, yeah. Dual. And, uh, yeah, overall, I was really, really busy, um, with the, uh, with the projections and, you know, for a weekend, especially just keeping everybody updated on stuff. I even threw in uh, F1 stuff. I actually made money in F1. I figured if I was, was going to put the projection, I might as well play. And I made like a few hours there. I mean, I didn't play big or whatever. But, yeah, um, I'd like to get into going forward. By the way, and then and then the and then the golf. Um, I was actually pretty close to to having a sweat. Like I had um, I mean, this is if that if 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 then whatever. But you know, Rom had like a seven footer to, to for the win that he couldn't convert over uh, Scheffler, and uh, Kevin Na had like four different chances to close out Zalatoris. Yeah. Yeah. And if those two things happened, I would have had like five of eight in the final eight and, and in, oh. in business. Yeah. Um, but uh, it didn't work out for me that way. I ended up having two in the final four, but they both lost in the semis and it wouldn't have really mattered. Any. I had a DJ and, uh, and Connors. Um, yeah. So that was that. And I actually had a little bit of a sweat in the Punta Cana one a little bit, but didn't really amount to much. And I'm uh, ready to get back after the basketball today. All right, well, let's do it, man. Um, let's jump right into it. It's uh, I'm just warning everybody. This is slates are going to be nuts. Like, well, you're forward. not going to like this one especially because you have you have it an island game, which with has is just loaded with value at the ten yeah. o'clock. Yeah, so. and it's it, but I'm just telling you right now, just everybody, this is the time when you start managing a little bit of bankroll. You 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 take a little like really weird chances because the, the, you're going to get weird rotations from some of these tanking teams. You're going to get guys who are, end up sitting out when you think they're supposed to be in. They'll be announced probable, and then they'll be announced out. So it's just that weird time of year. So it's good. It's good to remind everybody just that it's it's kind of the craziness. And and then and with the with the teams that are really contending, you you really do want to uh, the, the, the playoff seating. You can you can make up like four or five spots in both conferences right now if you get on a little bit of a hot streak. So people are still playing their their best guys in, in that situation for the most part. All right. Well, let's. With that said, let's let's jump right into the uh, the first games of the night. Uh, you have Denver, Charlotte, right? Yep. Okay. What are your thoughts on this one? And I guess what are we doing? Are we playing Jokic or not? I guess is the main major question. Well, first of all, let's talk about something else. I mean, I was able. I had a nice, pretty. I, I actually uh, cashed in, in the in the five fifty five last night. No, no. Uh, with with a special thank you to Mister Lamelo, um, who put up sixty four fantasy points at pretty low ownership. Um, you know, and, and, and I talk about with, you know, guys like this, we, we, when we talked about Booker and the other guys, just when it seems as though these guys don't have like a ceiling, like when you, when you were saying that with LaMelo too, you're like, listen, he's got a ceiling in there somewhere. I don't know where it is because he hasn't right. shown it in like weeks. Right. You know, it's kind of in there somewhere. And you just never know. <laughs> it's going to just, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop up out of there. Right. Um, and, you know, you, get, when the, you have guys that get the ball in their hands with a lot of different talents um, that that's always just kind of in the offing. So. Uh, with that said, it is a back-to-back -back for Charlotte, um, which makes it a little a little bit trickier. Um, and Denver, um, I don't I don't think they're on a back-to-back. -back, but the thing is about Jokic is like is is as we're kind of getting to. There's going to be there's already just a shit ton of value. So as kids say, and uh, might even be more. So let's just put it this way: if you do want to play Jokic, it's going to be criminally easily for you to, easy for you to do. And not to cut to it, but it's going to be an interesting decision whether you play Jokic or, for example, both DeJounte Murray and Trey Young, because um, mm -hmm. uh, you probably get away with either of those things. And you might even be able to get, with, get away with playing Jokic in one of those two anyway, um, which, we'll, which we'll get to. But Jokic certainly projects to be the top uh, world points play. The, um, 
is actually he's actually pretty cheap at 12. He's pretty from what I hear is really cheap on FanDuel um, relative to his price uh, right. and relative to his chances. But the question is, do, do we play Jokic? I mean, sure. I mean, you don't have to, um, but it certainly is. Uh, I'm not going to tell you not to play him. Um, he's I'm currently seeing ownership of only 19%. I have a feeling that has to go higher yep. um, just because of all that's going to make it available for him to play. Um, yep. but yeah, I mean, you could, you could play him and on the Charlotte side. Uh, I don't think I, again, Lamelo might be a little different, but I don't know if I want to go right back to him off the, off of a, off a good performance like that. Um, if I had any kind of opinion in this game as a weird, a weird, stupid opinion, I would play the under in this game. That's um, my first feeling too. I had the exact same thought. Oh, really? Yeah. That's exactly. my, that's my first instinct is that, uh, Denver probably on uh, Jokic in general probably doesn't want to play so fast. And you had Charlotte coming off of a, of a bat to bat. I don't sure exactly how fast they're going to want to play either. So I don't know. I, I I'm inclined to go the under there. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's Jokic clearly the best play. And then Charlotte, I don't know. Uh, I, I got, I guess LaMelo, if you're going to play anybody. Um, but I don't, I think I'm probably off them. Yeah. I think, I don't think there's anybody we need to, to, to overly go crazy reaching for. I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of digging just because, I really like Jokic and I want to see if there is any relevant history. Um, I know, you know, he and Plumlee were teammates and I just want to see if there's any history if that, because I, I always like a little excuse to, to if they're going to leave like Plumlee out there for some extra minutes because he's, it, it, you know, but again, because Harold's too small really and, and Plumlee's too small too, but it's just, I don't know. That's the only thing, other thing I could think to do. Nothing makes sense from a logic standpoint for me on anything for Charlotte. Um, the thing with Lamelo is he can always get high. I mean, if you look at these games where if he's shooting, you know, if he's seven for 10, seven for 12 from three, like he was in the last game, he makes seven threes. He's, he's going to, he's going to not, not always smash, but he's usually going to be really, really good point per dollar. Um, but as of right now, I, I just have Jokic in this game and I do think it is a priority like to try and get him in. They have things to play for. It's an incredible matchup, uh, like the nut matchup kind of for him basically. So I, I think Jokic is, is a priority play. And as of right now, I don't, I'm not treating anyone else as such, but if you wanted to, I'm never going to argue if you want to play LaMelo, Rozier or Bridges here, I think all of them are totally in play, but not, not guys who I'm hoping to end up with um, outside of maybe a little Rozier on FanDuel. Uh, certainly nobody to, to prioritize, but I, I might end up with one or two of them, you know, one of them just because of a run back or something like that, but mostly it's not, it's not for me. Uh, Orlando and uh, Cleveland. What do yeah, you got? So, there, so there's, there are two different th cases you can make here. So if you wanted to uh, to bring a, to bring a, a case against a a website for uh, for criminal pricing, you could start. You could you have a choice. I mean, you you could you could try to bring a case against DraftKings for openers um, for pricing Karis Levert at fifty six hundred. But if you really wanted a slam dunk case, you could bring a case in criminal court against FanDuel for pricing Levert and like. At, at something really ridiculous was he 40 something I, I don't know what he is over there but but from what i remember he was priced like in a in a, in a criminal fashion uh, let me just confirm what that is um yeah he's 4900 on fanduel um so uh that's going to be an interesting decision you have to make of what you want to do with that um you know you cleveland could screw around i guess with with um with lineups but um I think Kevin Love was a surprise non-start his last game. I, I, I wasn't really paying too much attention to it. That's what I had heard. But, I mean, if Levert's back at 30-plus minutes at those prices, I mean, it's just kind of – I don't know. That's that's the first thing I'm doing in that game. And with respect to Garland, I, I don't – I just think that if, if – it seems logical that Levert's going to be on the court that much. It's just going to take away from Garland so much that I don't think I'm going to play that. So, for me, I, I guess it's going to be – I mean, it is like early look. I guess it's going to be criminally chalky as well to play Levert, but that, that's, that's where I'm at. And on Orlando, um, I think that Wendell Carter might be questionable. Is that right? No, he's still in. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't get, I'm not getting too much on the Orlando side. So for me, it's just, you know, whether to eat the Levert chalk or not. I guess. Yeah. I, I, I can't get to anything in Orlando um, personally at the moment. It's just not, not for me. I don't know whether I'm into this Levert thing or not. This feels very suspect. The minute projections feel very suspect to me. Um, why are we going to assume because he played a bunch of minutes in one game 
is it because they were struggling and then they decided to maybe get, you know, rejuvenated and, and use Levert like more or whatever. And even in that 36 minutes that he played, he only put up 28 fantasy points. It wasn't, it wasn't good. He was one for six from three. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't had another, like there's not been another game with Garland available where he's been like this for Cleveland at all. I so it. I don't know why we're going to just all of a sudden assume that. Uh, I guess that the easy thing to say is, and, and the truth is that we, we need to know who's starting. Like, Right. One that's one thing. If if Kevin Love, I don't understand because they lost one game when they started Love and they decided to go away from it. I I just I like what Cleveland's done all year long. I'm a little confused by this. If they start Levert again, I, I think it is it is a really it, it makes a lot more sense to play him. But they seem to really be having trouble deciding who that fifth starter is, and they haven't been doing well yeah. while they've been trying to figure that out. So I'm not sure that the that, that playing Levert at. Uh, at really high ownership makes sense. If he does, I mean, if he's not high owned, I'm interested. If he's starting, I'm probably going to have to take a little bit of, even a little bit of the ownership, but if they, they could go back to something else. So I don't want to commit to this one too early in the day, just because if it, it could easily turn into Kevin Love, you know, uh, in the starting lineup, it could turn into, they could try something different and play Chetty Osman, you know, or, or Lamar Stevens, a little lower offensive guy, but a more defense. Like it's, I don't really know what they're going to do. Um, so I, I want to see what's in the starting lineup. If Levert does start, it's going to be hard to ignore the the price yeah. tags. But it's something about it feels fishy. That's my that's my initial thought. That's all I'm going to okay. say. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, Atlanta, Indiana. And by the way, when, when I say f- it's fishy, I also wouldn't be surprised if he if he starts plays 38 minutes and scores 50 fantasy points. Like there's, there's definitely a range here. Like it's just just a weird one. Um, Atlanta, Indiana. We have a lot of question marks here and. Look, Sheets, I guess you can start it off by, you know, you really like playing this, uh, this Trey Young, and I think it makes a lot of sense. They, they need, they, they've been trying to win games. Uh, when they do that, they tend to play him a million minutes, and he has all the usage in the world. They have an outside chance or a game and a half back of, the, of hosting the, the play-in game. They can even get up to the eight seed and only have to play one play-in game. And there's only, you know, seven games left in the season. So I I think that the, 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 that Trey Young thing makes sense. I don't, I don't have a, you know, I don't have any problem with that. What do you, what do you think about Trey? And then what do you think about this game? Yeah. The Pacers play fast as well, which doesn't, doesn't hurt. Um, and yeah, I mean, Trey, Trey is always a good play. Um, and on a slate where there aren't that many studs above him besides, you know, Jokic and, you know, John Thay Murray, I consider pretty much as equal as far as tonight, today's slate goes. Um, what about if Gallinari and, and Bogdanovich are out there? If they're out, because they're questionable, and they Bogdanovich didn't play that. I mean, that's partly why trade went so nuts. You know what I mean? He, we, we had no Bogdanovich the other night, and felt like I got, I got very like swept under the rug in the in the aftermath. But you know, if you take Bogdanovich off the court, like they got, he's all the offense. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I think in either case, uh, I think he's a good play. Um, I currently don't have too much interest in Bogdanovich or any of the other Atlantas, but I could be talked into it. Indiana, as usual, it's going to depend on what that front court looks like. You know, if, if, Go, if Goga is going to play or if he's not going to play, um, then it's at least Justin Anderson is not 3K anymore. He's 4,700. But, you know, if he's out, uh, Goga, then we're talking about Jalen Smith and Brissett, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I still believe that, uh, that Halliburton is just under projected with, with Brogdon out. Um, I, 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 I think 9,200 is totally fair for him and he's, you know, projecting terribly and he's going to, if he's actually going to be low owned, I mean, I, I would, I would take a shot at him and Trey in this game together. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. So uh, for me, uh, Halliburton, you know, projections began and then we're just kind of waiting on the, on, on the front court. Yeah, I have to say though, um, Halliburton, if you want to play him, he's 7,500 on FanDuel. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Pretty, that's pretty enticing. Um, but you'll, because of it, you're going to get zero ownership on him on DraftKings. So um, it, I, I agree it's somewhat. My, my interest in Indiana will depend on what happens with Patatse and even Dwayne Washington being questionable makes a little bit of a difference because if people are really going to load up on Justin Anderson, can I interest them in, in maybe loading up on, on a little bit of, I know he's put up some, some good games and, and all that. And it's a different role and all these things. I, I'm okay with even the Anderson at 4,700. I don't love it. It's not what I would try to do, but I would definitely be interested in Lance Stevenson if Dwayne Washington's out. Um, the extra minutes that could go to him, it's a great pace game. We've seen 
you know, we, we know with Lance, there's a high range of outcomes, but like two out of his last four, he's put up over 30 fantasy points. He's 4,300. I think he's got, I think he'd be kind of interesting if that happens, but as of right now, it's sort of a wait and see for me. I think Patate, if he plays is, is mildly interesting at best. And if he's out, I do have interest in the other front court guys, but mostly this game is going to be, do we play Trey? And for me, it does really, really, really matter whether Gallinari and Bogdanovich play because they run a ton of their offense through these other guys. Those, those are like their, their second and third guys. And we already have no John Collins. So Trey is a good play because of those, you know, John Collins being gone alone. He can always get, get there. But if Bogdanovich and, and Gallinari are out, I mean, I think that it's going to be very hard to not make a case that Trey is like a, not a must play, but a, a really, we probably should play more Trey than, than not play Trey. And I think, I think there's not value to get he and Jokic in together today. And that, that's sort of my first play. And I understand that there's a lot of other things, but it'll depend on Gallinari and, and Bogdanovich. But if either one of those guys are, are out, especially Bogdanovich, I'm going to be all over Trey on both sides. Um, Sacramento, Miami. And this feels like a, every time I say this though with Miami lately, I don't know what's going on with this team. I cannot figure it out. They are just collapsing. Um, and they're still in first, I mean, we're still just in barely in second place, I guess. But uh, every time I see a spread, I'm like, why are they only 12 and a half point favorites in Sacramento on the road in, in Miami? I would think that they could be like 18 point favorites, 20 point favorites, and it probably still isn't enough. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to do anything on the Sacramento side. Are you, Sheets, are you interested in anything in, in this game or on the Miami side? I am. Um, so so uh, the Heat are coming off of four straight losses, including three straight at home. Um, one to Golden State, one to the Knicks. And one, to, and one to Brooklyn. Uh, Br- Butler was 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 questionable coming into the Saturday game against Brooklyn, and they got blown out. And he didn't play the second half pretty much. Um, right. Gave him a little bit of a run in the uh, you know it's his opening. Look at the game flow here. They they um, they, they gave him his his starter. They started him for like seven minutes or whatever, and then basically they just took all the starters out and said you know enough, and 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 just and that was the end of that. So the, the bad news is it's like you said. They haven't been playing great, and they had that thing on happen on the bench or whatever it is. But the fact of the matter is that Butler got a chance to, to, to rest from 25 minutes, only playing 25 minutes. And now they are playing uh, Sacramento, and I am completely interested in Butler here. Um, yeah. and, and, and to answer, you know, people say, oh, maybe that will be low L. I don't think so. I think, I think it's not going to be particularly, particularly different. I think that people are going to be playing this. Uh, and I like him. And I like them. I mean, Sacramento's still a good pace up spot. Um, and I like both of them. And I feel as though with a four game losing streak in the, uh, in the offing here, yeah. that, that the blowout risk is minimal in that if they're, I think they're going to hammer them if they have a chance to hammer them. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, they, they don't, I don't think they have the luxury right now of being able to just kind of screw around if they're up like nine, 10, 11, 12 points, you know, they haven't, they've, they've lost literally four games in a row. I think, I think they need to, put a really, really good game together. So I, I actually do like both of them. I like Butler and I like Bam and I don't like anything from Sacramento. Yeah. So I, I can definitely get behind uh, the Butler idea. Um, what I would say is that I, we just got news that Caleb Martin's out also for Miami and <clears throat> we don't know about hero or Tucker. If either one of those guys are out, I think you should be playing one of these guards. Um, and I still probably will take some shots with Duncan Robinson anyway. Mm-hmm. But but I really think that like if you take out one of if you take out Hero especially and and Caleb Martin, I mean the minutes and they're they're just gonna have shots. It's gonna be max stress or it's gonna be uh, <coughs> excuse me or it's gonna be uh, uh, Duncan Robinson is prob- are probably gonna have a good game especially in this matchup. Oladipo kind of mucks it up a little bit because he's you know ramping back up. But I, I think that that's the only other thing I would say in this game, Butler or Bam, and then one of those guys. I Really hard for me to get to anybody on Sacramento's side uh, today. I, I see that, like, you have, you know, you've got Jeremy Lamb and DiVincenzo projecting okay. Not not for me. Um, unless we hear somebody's out, I'm probably not touching Sacramento. Uh, Chicago, New York. What do you got here for, for yeah, you? Yeah, so I, I think I have something. Um, well, first of all, Chicago, you have – DeRozan and, and, and all these guys, um, they're all playing. So it makes them all kind of less, less desirable. Um, but then again, I mean, these guys all have still have ceilings, but I don't think I'm going to get to, boy, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I'm going to get to them, but maybe I will. I just, when I look at DeRozan 8,600, I'm, I'm just going to, 
I mean, it's, maybe it's a different position. I mean, not even. I mean, I just, I'd rather play Butler. I don't know what to say. Um, uh, and the one guy who's really cheap, and I think he's starting again, is, As- is Asamnu. Um, well, he, st- he started because DeRozan was out. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, I don't know why he's projecting like he is right now to start again. Oh, okay. It, okay, it, it okay. could happen, but then again, he's just going to... No, if, I don't if, really have him projecting for that great or that great. I have him with like... I mean, I guess 30 minutes is, is a decent projection. For yeah, him. it's a lot. Um, yeah, he hasn't done anything in a while. Remember that? He had that run back uh, earlier in the season when he was really killing it. He probably will start, actually, because I think they're going to make that change from green to him. But I, I, even still, I, yeah, it's... it's well, yeah, but I mean, he, he did all that stuff without Levine and DeRozan. Or right. Levine okay. Okay. So it's a lot different. And Caruso, by the way, was out for all those games. Okay, fair fair enough. I was just making, making yeah. a note of it. And then on the Knicks, I mean, I'm just going to look real quick. Um, no, <laughs> not really. I, I don't really have too much interest in the Knicks team. Oh, interesting. Okay, because I'm like trying to figure it out. Like I, Chicago has turned a little bit into the old Chicago defensively. And I don't have a ton of interest, like off the at the prices and everybody. I could see like a, a, a you know a far fetched maybe Julius Randle play. Uh, pretty weird what they did the other night, and it threw me completely off on Friday when they Robinson was available, but they started the other two. They started Sims and uh, wow, I didn't see that. And and uh, what's it called? An Obi. So it's interesting because you look at their projected starting lineup, and it's Mitch Robin, you know, with Randle, which is what you'd expect. But Sims and Obi Toppin started over over Robinson the other night, and I didn't I didn't understand. Maybe it was like I don't even know what it was to be honest, or what the reason was. Or maybe he had to go to the bathroom. I, don't, I have no idea what why that they they shook out like that. But uh, very few people caught on to it on Friday, and it, it I thought Mitch Rob was out when I when I saw that, but they didn't say he was out. They just said that these guys are starting, and we didn't get an official word on anybody being out. And Mitch Rob ended up playing off the bench. Um, all of this to say that I, I don't really have a ton of interest in this game, but just be look, be ready to look for, okay, when maybe we're going to give up, give up on the season now and maybe Emmanuel quickly will go out there and play 35 minutes or something. That's basically all I'm looking for from the Knicks right now. It just doesn't feel very likely. So I, I'm pretty much off this game. Wow. Boston, Toronto. Uh, you know, I thought they were going to do this. The Boston just resting everybody. What is that? Get that. I mean, they don't want to get people stuck in Toronto with 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 COVID protocols. That's um, right. So Horford is not traveling with the team, and with with Williams out already. Yeah. Now you're getting a thirty seven hundred dollar Daniel Tice, um, which is producing a lot of value. Um, and it's asking the next question is 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 what else in the front court even exists. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I guess it's more rebounds for Tatum, I suppose. I mean, does Luke Cornett Grant, ever play? Grant, I mean, Will, Grant Williams, you know, you can make an argument for him. He's been a little, he's been a little better actually at scoring. Oh, dude, he 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 destroyed the universe as chalk the other day. You were you you didn't play yesterday? I didn't play the week. He was thirty. He was thirty six hundred with guys out, and people played him, and he got thirteen fantasy points, and everybody yelled at him. I mean, just yell at yourself when you play Grant. You know what I mean? Like you can't yell at anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but Tyson 3,700 is going to be, uh, that's rough. Uh, I think, that, you know, it's obviously going to look really good. Um, and then I'm, I'm waiting to see who else doesn't travel. But for now, and remember, it's, it's travel Toronto on a back-to-back as well. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> I would bet that they sit Tatum. Then, or, well, maybe Jalen Brown, maybe. I don't know. Um, well, Tatum's got the Q tag on him already. So. Oh. But they are playing for the one seed in the East. So it's kind of a tricky situation to guess on this one. Not only that, they are pummeling people. They are they are beating – I mean, they beat the hell out of good teams recently that were just – it was – it's like incredible how well they're playing. And, you know, all the talk of, oh, can they – are they a real contender? Is this just a regular season? I think they're a real contender. I, I'm 100% buying in. Um, they look really, really good. And they have they, – they, they, they play perfect team basketball. But, again, you're missing your, your entire front court. I'm not sure how much it's going to matter against this specific type of a team, though, in uh, Toronto. So, I don't know, man. This is this is. Will they rest on the back to back? I don't. They, they, do you go for? It? It's a tough situation. Like I don't. I don't know what to what to even project because we've seen teams treat these very differently over the past few years. And I, I personally, if it, if it was my guess, I, my guess is they would try and go for it with the guys they do have available. But Tatum with that Q tag keeps lingering in my brain. So. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see, right? Yep. Toronto, uh, not much interest. Uh, Van Vliet supposedly going to play. 
Um, Trent, I imagine, does not. Um, and uh, I don't feel like playing anybody against Boston nowadays. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. That, that, so the, the, the part of the reason why I'm speculating that Tatum is out is they're a four and a half point underdog, which basically with the way they, they're playing, they should never be an underdog, even if you took out the other front court guys. They're just killing everybody. So uh, is it Horford and, and Williams enough for them to be a four and a half point underdog? I don't think so. Um, that means makes me feel more like maybe Tatum does sit, and then, then we have a lot of interest in this game, or at least I would have a lot of interest in this game. But it's really hard for me to get to individual plays on Toronto and just make sense of it. Um, you do have Ken Birch who's going to be out, and I think the projections haven't all updated for that yet. Okay. So I think that Boucher, who's actually sort of become like a little bit of – he went from the doghouse to the penthouse really quickly. Um, he's, he's, he's had some, some games lately where they, they've really given him the run and he's had some nice games. But I don't know if I – at 5,600 that I would want to do that either. So uh, I, I think I'm pretty much off of this – off of this game outside of Tice and or and will and I I am going to mix Grant Williams in a little bit. By the way, I don't care if everybody else. I, I'm happy he burned everybody else because mm -hmm. I think he's still re reasonable. Um, but other than that, I, I don't really have any interest in this game until we hear about Tatum being out, of course. Which I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could happen. Um, uh, Dejounte Murray, Murray and Jakob Podol are look like really really good plays for San Antonio against Houston. Um, I don't know what the spread is, but I don't. I don't know if San Antonio is blowing anybody. Has been blowing anybody out. Um, seven, seven and a half. Yeah, so that's 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 fair enough. Um, you know, between him and and Trey, and I guess to a lesser extent Halliburton, and 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 there's ball. I, I think there there are these 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 plays that you can make instead of Jokic if you want. Um, and Murray certainly. Boy, I we talk about this a lot. You know, who who'd have thought he'd be like an eleven K player? You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, who would think anybody that Popovich coach could be an eleven K player? <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, I mean, certainly going to rate to be a good player for whatever reason. I just I just feel as though Trey is a better play. Um, but I don't know. Uh, Jonathan Murray certainly looks like a good play. Portal, as I mentioned, and I don't really have too much else in this game. Yeah. Uh, I think DeJounte Murray is completely reasonable. He's going to be very popular and I'll probably be one of those people who, who definitely likes him on FanDuel at 10K. Um, it's a great matchup for their style. The only thing is like it, when we're paying full, full up for these, fully up for these guys is it makes me like, okay, we have an excuse for Jokic because of his matchup. We'll have a really good excuse for Trey if, if one of Gallinari or Bogdanovich, especially if Bogdanovich sits. Um, and, and it's just a question of, okay, do we, do we want to put this, these money here? Like, if you look at his last game log, DeJounte Murray, of course you'd want to play him because he put up 58 fantasy points and he was four for 19 from the floor. <laughs> like, it just makes you feel like the guy has, has an immense ceiling. Lonnie Walker could be back. We'll see about that. Like, that's, that, that would determine a little bit of my, my interest. Right now I have Murray behind Trey if one of those guys, if one of those guys for the other guys sit. It is a perfect matchup for Murray, though, so it's kind of hard for me. My initial thoughts are Murray on FanDuel. Um, and I have to figure out what I want to do with him on DK. And I don't have a lot of interest in the uh, Houston side of things, but I probably, if I'm going to play Murray, I would probably try to force in some of these thinner plays. Uh, the Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Deshaun Tate, just because the game is going to be up and down and the pace is going to be great. It's just going to be a matter of, can they, are they going to keep it close? Um, Kevin Porter Jr., 5,600 has small board eligibility on FanDuel. So I would say that over there is probably where you want to try to play him. But I think that there's probably something that could happen in this game. It's just really hard to, to, to feel trusting of any Houston player um, that, that you don't know is going to get minutes. And the ones we do know, well, the one we know, the only one we know, I should say, that we know will get minutes is Jalen Green. <laughs> like, it's all I can promise you. Everybody else's minutes are completely in flux, including Christian Woods, because Sengun is the best player on this team, um, I think by a pretty good ways. Uh, going forward, it might be Jalen Green, but I, I don't understand this team. They're doing it the wrong way, in my opinion. You let J you let Sengun play 30 minutes. Play let him play as much as he can. Um, I don't know. So for me, that's why I'm sort of off of the Houston side. But I do like Jalen. I do like Dejounte Murray. I just have him and Trey very close, uh, depending on what happens with the other Atlanta Atlanta guys. Uh, how about Golden State and Memphis? Which another you know another game that that usually you go oh the pace will be great. I'm not sure with the guys who are playing that the pace is going to be what we're expecting. Well, first of all, 
I was listening to a different different show and, and I was like half paying attention. There's a stat which I'm gonna probably misquote because it didn't really sound right. But but if, if it was mentioned, it sounds I couldn't I can't believe it. And I might be exaggerating or it might be accurate. It's possible that the Memphis Grizzlies are something like 17 and one without Morant. Yeah, no, they're incredible. They're, I think they're, they have a they have an eighty nine percent winning percentage. So it's not quite that, but it's close to that. I mean, that's just absurd. <laughs> well, um, it only makes sense in some sense because they, they have like fifteen guys that they that they can all that all can play. And some of those games without him, he hasn't played with with uh, with guys like Dylan Brooks all season long. A lot of a lot of the season, but they've played those guys a lot when when he's been out too. Not to say that you know anything about that. It's going to kill his MVP. He's not going to win the MVP anyway. But um, but it is kind of crazy. It just shows you how deep Memphis is. Sorry, shoots. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, on the Memphis side, I'm really not getting to too much. I mean, I'm looking at the uh, couple of Q tags. I think there was a um, uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Clark are both questionable. It says Clark still questionable. Jaron Jackson Jr. still questionable. I think that if um, I think it's worth mentioning that if either one of them sits, I would play the other one. Mm -hmm. um, and if both of them sit, then, you know, then we're at Kyle Anderson, I guess. Um, uh, that's, that's what I would say about Memphis. Golden State, um, Draymond's not going to play. And what's his name? Uh, the other guy's not going to play. Uh, um, Clay Thompson's not going to play. Yeah, Clay plays out. Uh, you got a lot of a lot of plays over here. Not not a lot of plays. You have like, in my opinion, three really really good plays. Maybe three and a half. The, the only thing that's stopping it is is like you said the the possible pace issues. But whatever, that should be incorporated in the projections. Jordan Poole, who I just kept refusing to play at seventy three hundred because I couldn't believe it. It just it just looks like a great play. I mean, he's 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 eighty one hundred. Um, and I don't see him being on all that much. And then I got Kaminga, who looks like a really, really good play at 4,400. And then, like him or hate him, I have Andrew Wiggins as an okay play, but I have Poole and Kaminga as very, very strong. And then uh, Gary Payton is kind of like a fringy type value play. So I like, I like all those Golden State guys. They're really, they're really showing up for me, actually. So uh, I'm going to keep an eye on them. I, I, the only fear I have for both of these teams when there's value and you're missing all your stars and everything is that, again, the other deep team is Golden State. So yeah, somebody probably is going to get there. They, I don't know what, what the deal was with the benching Kaminga um, in the second half yesterday. That was weird. I, I didn't watch that game. I just noticed a little bit in our discord while well, the Oscar, I was at this Oscar party and that, well, that was happening. And that was, uh, that was weird. That threw me off a little bit. They have a lot, they, they still have plenty of bodies. I don't know who I want to play from their team, to be honest with you, except for Jordan Poole. And I just want to say like Jordan Poole, like, he hasn't even hit like his ceiling of games. Like, I mean, some of these games are with clay and Draymond, but his shot attempts are like that. What are they? 20, 21, 23, 18, 22, 25, three pointers. He's shooting 13, nine, 13, 13, 13, 10. How can we not have interest in guys like this for tournaments? Now, the problem is if he ends up popular, I could make just as easy of a case. Oh, if he's cold shooting, he's not going to put up 50 fantasy points. And that's good enough reason not to play him. If he's not popular, you kind of—I think you—you you kind of have to play guys like this. Like that's exactly what you want. All the usage directed in in one, all the shots directed to one spot. But everybody like Gary Payton and and Andrew Wiggins. We, we've seen this story with Andrew Wiggins before. He can have a game, sure, but it's not like he goes off whenever these guys are out. We—he's had this all season long, and we really never get a game out of him. So I, I'm just—I don't know. I don't want to. I don't know if I want to bite on the Golden State side, and on the Memphis side, it's kind of hard where they've priced everybody. I'm just going to keep saying the same thing, though. D'Anthony Melton will never project well and always gets there. Always mm -hmm. puts up 30 fantasy points. <laughs> like Even if he plays 20 minutes, he puts up 30 fantasy points. It's basically like pencil it in. I don't know how much I'm going to get to him tonight, but I mean, he's now 5,500, 5,600, which is making me feel like an idiot for not playing him more when he was 4,500 um, and just doing this every single time out, basically. He's just an incredibly efficient guy. He's going to have the occasional five fantasy point game or whatever. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that I feel like I'm supposed to like in this game. And I, at the moment, I don't really like very much of it at all. Um, this is a game that I think is probably better played on FanDuel uh, just because there's more ways to get different things in. Some of the prices haven't hiked up in, as much for the Memphis guys. Um, oh, they actually, they have even a little bit more than I thought they did. I don't know. It feels like a game we should attack, but I, I can't figure out where to attack it outside of Jordan Poole. So if you want to play the NBA in DraftKings, 
So you have a two hour break between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. What I've done for you is, is ranked the Portland players by salary, okay, on my screen here. Okay. And I want you to just look at what this looks like, okay? Out, 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 okay? <laughs> Top five are out. Then two of them get to play. Then out, out. Then two of them get to play. Then out, okay? This is, this is what the NBA is. And Portland in full, in not only full tank mode. So, so you don't, first of all, you don't know who's starting. Okay. <laughs> they, they change it every day. And like today, for example, they're projecting like Keon Johnson to be like this incredible play. You want to actually started yesterday. Okay. Yeah, he, started, just don't know. he started the game before, I believe too. But by the way, he's never gotten there once, but anyway, keep going. So, 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 and I actually saw Portland, I was actually sweating. I, I had a, I had a good, I had a good lineup with uh, what's his name with CJ Ellaby the other day. So I was watching some of that. And one thing about Portland, they don't play a shred of defense, not even a little bit. Okay, not even. And, a and 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 the other team just can't just loves playing it. And Portland gets to shoot fast. And oh, Ellaby just loves it. He's just going. Oh, everybody on Portland. First of all, if you pass it on Portland, you're not getting it back. Okay, like whoever you pass it to is just shooting. That's just what's happening. And it is just a fantasy friendly freaking team. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so if you figure it out, um, great. And we'll get back to that. Now, wouldn't it be funny if they were playing a team just like that, that, that had their top players out? Ooh, look at that. So you have Shea out. Giddy Chief, you're bearing out. the lead too. This is the Tankathon 2020. This is 2022. Right. This is right. the ultimate tank. Shea out. Giddy out. Dort out. So the first guy that's projecting is, is Theo Maladon as, as overall the best play on the slate, okay? But then you get Pukic, Pukasevsky, who's right there, and then Trey Mann, who's, like, right there. I mean, you could – I mean, like, this, is a, this is an island game. How sick is that? <laughs> this is, like, an island tank game that's going to basically – you need to get right, I think, to, to, to win the slate with all guys that are not going to be the NBA next year. I shouldn't say that, but, but, but with, 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 with just complete scrubs, um, what do you do? I mean, if you don't know who's starting, you know, I, I think that that Maladon is probably safe. I think that Pukashevsky is, I think, I think Maladon, Pukashevsky and Trey Mann are, 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 are the, are the golden, are the OKC guys. And for Portland, uh, I honestly don't know. I think what's I think what's sneaky is that um, is that Watford's out, okay? Because then maybe you could yeah. get if he starts or if he plays even, you could play some Greg Brown um, for Portland. But with Watford out, that that's that ain't a lot of fun. So LB Brown is is Elijah Hughes and Elijah Hughes going to get some time. Greg I mean, Brown Winslow's out too, right? <laughs> Greg Brown is questionable as well. So like... yeah. We yeah, <laughs> so it's uh, it is quite the <laughs> show out there. Yeah, it's uh, it's you're gonna. I think you like. So my first thought is, I think you want four players from this game. Um, you from have each, nine from players each, from each team, like eight total. You think? No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> leave leave all the money on the table. Um, I, I, I that's my first thought, and I think there's different ways to do it. You could argue for a three-one and different it's always nerve wracking with, with OKC. Cause as their way of tanking is, Oh, we'll rotate these guys out minutes. If they're playing too well, like right. I, I genuinely right. think that's why Isaiah Roby is not playing more is that he's just a little too good. <laughs> like he's not great, but he's just like a little too good to, to maybe you could win a game. This, this game has a, is a one and a half point spread. And if you told me right now that this Portland was going to put this lineup out there, I would say you could put a college basketball team out there that, that, that should be a one and a half point favorite over them. That's how bad <laughs> the team is. It's really bad. Maybe it's a little bit exaggerated, but so I'll start with OKC. Uh, in order of interest, I think it's Maladon in, in order. Maladon, Trey Mann, Poku. And I think they're all priorities for me. Um, not must, but priorities. Then you get into Lindy Waters, Aaron Wiggins. And maybe if you want to take a chance on the hot cheese, if Kretschy gets hot, the problem is if he gets hot, then maybe they pull him. They don't want to win games. It's really hard to know what to do with those other situations. I like the idea of Roby as a long shot play on DraftKings even in spite of what I said, I don't think they're totally going to give him no minutes. Yeah. They do have Jer Jeremiah Robinson Earl, who also is in play coming back from injury at three K. Um, I don't know, man. It's, but I think that the main ones are Maladon, uh, man and Poku. 
And if you're going to play, you know, got a number of guys here, if the starting lineup shifts in such a way, then, then you can always pivot. Um, it feels really weird because LB is like, I feel like there's been so many chances for him to really, you know, yeah. rush and, and he's had like two, two games that were really, yeah. really solid. Mostly he's just in that low 20 fantasy point. Basically, no matter what happens, he's always there. Um, Keon Johnson never gets there, but they, they're down to nine bodies. Um, I like the idea of speculating and playing a little. The, the, Greg Brown never never gets the run that we were, were expecting, but I, I think it's it's Brown. I guess for me it would be Brown. Uh, I guess Keon Johnson then Brown if Brown plays. We don't even know about that. And then the guy who maybe is going to get overlooked because he's the only expensive one in this game is Eubanks. But I would say that like against this against this front line. I think Eubanks is probably going to score in the 40 plus fantasy, 40 ish fantasy point range, which makes him a really good play at 71 and 6,300 on FanDuel. Um, so I like Eubanks. I, I, I have Portland with a bunch of, I just have Portland with a two next to it. Like I want two guys. I don't know which ones they are. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, McLemore to, to mix in. You don't know what they're going to do with Chris Dunn because it, they, they were starting him and then he, they were starting to be a little competitive and then they start stop playing him. Um, so through, never, through the other day and again because I, I had a good lineup this one I was watching so Chris Dunn went, so I needed him for one pivot right so I had I had Chris Dunn slotted in and then they announced that Chris Dunn was not going to be starting he was going to be coming off the bench and so I just pivoted I went to, to LRB and 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 Chris Dunn went off like 60% on coming off the bench so I just figured I made a huge mistake that he was going to come off the bench and score make 30 you know run 32 fantasy 32 minutes anyway, but he did nothing. I mean, like, and, and, and the thing that you mentioned is that even though these guys are running nine guys, I mean, it's not like any of them are three K, you know, right. like they're all like 44, 4,500 and none of them are that great. And you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not like I'm going to be that upset to, to like not have one. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that the, the, yeah, it definitely feels like, okay. See, it seems like the more targetable team, but you got you kind of feel like Keon Johnson at least his minutes. I don't want to say they're secure. Like the, right. it makes the most sense to me of anything. Like and Ellaby's too to some extent. But Keon Johnson is you know this guy was the twentieth pick in last year's draft. Like it, it seems like the guy you want to get minutes to. Ellaby seems like there's no reason for them to give minutes to Chris Dunn. I, they might do it, but there's no reason for them to. There's they'll no give him twenty four. That's what they'll get. Yeah, they'll get the Macklemore. They'll probably do the same twenty four. Everybody, everybody, everybody will get twenty four. <laughs> yeah, only Brandon Williams and and, the, and and by the way the only maybe maybe that's the other weird thing you could do because I like the idea of Eubanks the the two the two low owned guys are going to be their two better players and that's Eubanks and Brandon Williams and I think they're both solid plays and Brandon Williams on on FanDuel is very solid um at 5700 but on DraftKings I don't know man it's just hard I just feel like you, you're getting four players from this game in my opinion maybe you could argue for three or, or I guess you could argue for two but I want, well, I want it, by the way by the way the two other guys we forgot to mention maybe you didn't uh, I did for Oklahoma for OKC I mean not that you need more players but Kretschy at 3,500 yeah I said that uh, and the other one the uh, the Aaron Wiggins at 3,900 I mean all yeah any or all these guys not any or all but any of them could get there um you know, I got a little bit of opinion here. I, I've, I've seen this. I've seen this before. So, so here, here's something I've been getting back to AAU a little bit this year. One of the things that I do is with the kids on the bench, right? Before they, before they, you know, I send them into the game. If they're on the bench, I ask them, "Hey, what's the score?" Like they can't tell me what the score is. They don't go in. You know what I mean? Because that means they're not locked in. They, they're right. not know what's going on. This is like exactly that type of game where, where you ask like. 80% of the, the players on that bench, what the scores, no one's going to have a clue. Like they're going to be going up and down in freaking full scrimmage, scrimmage mode. Everybody knows everybody's going to get minutes. Everybody's going to go freaking, you know, go shoot the ball all day long when they're in the game. I think it's like the easiest over, like whatever it is, like in the world. I mean, this is, this is going to be a freaking pickup game between these two teams and, and no one's going to play a shred of defense. So I don't know what it is. Was it two, I guess two twenty five. I'm just guessing. Um, but whatever it is, I, I, I'm just going to go over it. Yeah, I, I, I kind of agree with it. It's, it's, what, is, what is the total there? 220, it's only 221 and a half. So, I mean, it's fine. I think that seems a little low. I actually agree. I with mean, you. yeah, bad players. So they're not going to score them. You, you think they wouldn't but score the that much. It's but... so bad, it makes up for it. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Like everybody, all the, you know, she's, you coach yeah. a, all these guys can score. Yeah. If there's no defense being played. Right. It's, they're all capable of it. Right. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a funny situation. So I'm, I'm looking at, at four guys, but, but I'm, I'm going to say that, 
I think it's okay to go three from this last game. The only advantage also about the four is like, what if they decide to, what if some of the, uh, what if, what if Jeremiah Robinson Earl, who's supposed to come back tonight, <sighs> doesn't come back? Um, what if any of these, anybody, if they lose any bodies, like they're, you're talking about eight man rotation, eight man teams that, that are priced in such a way that you kind of have to play them. So are we supposed to, are we supposed to backload everything to see you starting in this game or no? I, well, the thing is that the thing is it doesn't matter because you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to have guys from the right. same game that are going to be your pivots. Right. Right. So right you right. might have to leave some money on the table because they could throw out any kind of weird lineup, but I do think you want to try to get three or four of the guys from this game in, in there as, as, as at a first look. Now, again, if, if we get a bunch of guys out for Atlanta or any of the other teams beforehand, maybe that value tends thins a little bit. But as of first look, it's it's four guys for me from this game is, is my first way to look at it. But I think you could argue for three. And the guys I'll be mixing those guys in with, just to, to get through my plays of the day, um, would be on, on DraftKings, would be Jokic, Trey, uh, Butler or Bam, Tice or Williams. Uh, Jordan Poole and, or DeJounte, Jordan Poole, DeJounte Murray. That's pretty much all my list is. And that's what you can do. You can use this value and play it with some of these top guys. On, on FanDuel, Jokic, Trey, Halliburton, Levert, uh, Butler, Murray, Poole, and Williams or Tice. Um, but again, it's not a... This is a, this is a slate that I feel like plays pretty small. I, I usually have a much longer first look list than I do. It's, it's just part of the problem. reason I don't is because this OKC Portland game, I honestly, I'll, I'll have better information at, at 545. But um, as of right now, it's really hard to know who I actually want to play. I just know I need to have pieces. of. So, game. So, so just for fun, again, the, the, everything's going to be different. Be different. Everything's going to be different. Just for fun, given what I had right now, I just ran a Saber Sim build of 150 lineups. And I'm, I haven't even looked at what it's going to say yet because I have it in another tab here. I wonder what it's going to give me. I'm guessing probably a hundred percent maladon and i i bet you there'll be like the line us with like six guys in that game maybe yeah. i don't know let's 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 see let's see what it does uh no it was only 85 percent maladon but it's got then like the top owned guys are are him and pokashevsky let's see if any stacks what is that yeah it's got a couple with four guys from one team most of them have at least three guys from one team so uh yeah, this OKC th Portland game, at least for now, is going to be the place where you have to play value. But again, everything changes during the course of the day. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's, that's it for us. Now, uh, Sheets and I will be uh, with you guys. Uh, Sheets might be a little later than me, but I will be uh, with you at 5:45 Eastern time. Hopefully, assuming that my internet holds up, I might have to play less lineups today and maybe higher buy-in or something and less lineups so I could just do it on my phone if I have to because right. I've been having some serious problems out here in LA. So. Yep. Good luck to everybody, and uh, yeah, don't go slap somebody because they talk about your girlfriend. Just you can well, confront them like a man instead. Just uh, that's well, well, this, is, well, this is actually this is actually interesting. So before we even get into this, I mean, remember that even though all that value is late, I mean, the Jokic decision is 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 right off the bat. You know, yeah. so you are oh, going to we're playing the, the, the we're spending on the early guys, and then we're saving the the value for later. That's what I'm I get. Yeah, well, one I feel suspect on, and I'm probably going to end up with some of them. But I just think the Levert thing is a little more suspect than it's being treated with. And I think he's going to end up, if, if this the way that I've heard the, the shows I listen to, the other things I saw written up, if he ends up like 50% owned, you, you, you got to think about fading that on um, DraftKings. Um, what about I, FanDuel if he's 50% owned? A little easier to play him on FanDuel because he doesn't need to, even his old role, he, he's okay right. at that price. But yeah, it's, I mean, I guess it makes it even a better fade. just depends on how you look at it. Right. Um, Anyway, all right, guys. Well, it should be a fun slate. I'll see you guys at 545 Eastern, and uh, right. hope you all had a great weekend. Good luck, everybody. All right. I'll see you later, Bobby.